Florida, we have a lot of hurricanes and stuff, so we use, mostly use um, concrete. And I'm just asking, is there any type of substitute that we can use instead of like concrete? Thank you. Well, con well, concrete, concrete is a um, concrete's an interesting material because it, its main ingredient is this stuff called Portland cement. And Portland cement takes a lot of energy to make and a lot of energy to produce. And we have to heat it to 5,000 degrees, and it gives off all this carbon dioxide. And uh, um, concrete is now responsible for some 10 to 12% of all global warming. It's just for making concrete. And uh, it's really a crazy material to use. And in a place like Florida, it, it, it's good for the hurricanes because it's strong. But it also, it, in a hot place like Florida, the concrete heats up and stays hot. And through the night, it keeps, you, keeps the, the building hot. So it makes a hot place even hotter. There are other things that we can use instead of concrete. We have now engineered panels that are two panels of plywood that are sandwiched together with an insulation in between, and they're really strong. And we can use those in a place like Florida where there's a lot of hurricanes and they're strong enough to, to use. And we can use them for the walls and the roof and the floors. And uh, their high insulation value is great in a place like, like Florida. But it, that's a great question. The alternative materials you use, if they are just if they last as long and if they're just as strong. Thank you. Well, that's a great question. And, uh, um, well, it really depends on the material. But typically, yeah, we try, to, we try to pick things that are incredibly durable because we're trying to build buildings to last for 50 to 100 years. And uh, uh, often the cheapest materials are the least durable because they wear out all the time. So we're trying to use, use materials that are both uh, affordable, but also uh, that last a long time. Uh, one way that we do it is we use natural materials that don't need painting all the time. Uh, materials like stone, you, you know, you wouldn't want to paint stone. Or um, materials like wood, and instead of painting the wood, we just stain it naturally. So it brings out the beauty of the wood. Um, but there's a lot of green materials that um, don't last as long because they haven't been around as long, but we're trying to avoid those. Hello, I'm Ryan, and I had a question about sustainable community design. How do you take a community which is very car dependent, like uh, suburbs, and compact it? Is it possible to compact a community? Thank you. Yeah, it's very possible to compact a community. The trouble is that everybody's afraid of what that's going to look like, so they probably wouldn't approve it. Um, but if you look at the suburbs, you got you know you have a house, and then you have a lawn that nobody uses because they're all in the backyard, and then you have a sidewalk, and then you've got cars. And what you can do is you can, um, you know, t stop use stop parking cars on one side of the street and make them park on the other, and then between the road and the front yard we can plant gardens, and um, you know grow you could grow your own food if you wanted to. Between the houses you could put in little stores or businesses or something. But what you really need to do is you need to stop this idea that it's all house and there's nothing but house here and you need to start mixing in different uses like stores and retail and other things. And then that's how you, that's how you kind of reclaim the suburbs and compact it as you say. The trouble is I don't think anybody's going to agree to that. But it's a, it's a cool idea and if you were to design it well enough it, it should work. For our project in Ecuador, our locally available building materials consist of wood, cinder blocks, and concrete. We say that local materials are a better alternative than new, more ecologically sustainable materials sourced from another place other than in Ecuador. So we'd have to bring them down with us. Thank you. I think the, I think the local materials would be a better choice uh, because the local materials also, if you think about it, have a lot of benefits to them. One, they don't require as much energy to get them to the to the property because they're already there. Two, they're supporting the local economy. The the local Ecuadorians are making that stuff, so it's helping you know uh, uh, create jobs and keep keep them in jobs. But also, they're they're materials that are appropriate to the place. I wouldn't just look at standard materials like concrete blocks and and uh, and things. I'd look to see what the oldest buildings in Ecuador are built out of. That's usually a short indication of, of the appropriate way to build. So if you look at like their old traditional buildings, what were they made out of? And that'll inform what's appropriate for the weather and for the climate and for the and for the you know for the landscape. 
So some research into what they used to build is probably a good thing. It's only been in the last 50 years that everybody started building the same way all over the planet. And um, we've forgotten how to build something that is appropriate to a place. Um, I wanted to know if you were building like a whole new building, um, how much would it be to, um, you know, have the whole building just come out as a whole like green building? If it's like a whole new, you know, type of system, is the, would that be a really expensive cost at all? Thank you. Well, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, it really depends on how you define green. You know, we could make a building such that whenever it rains, all that rainwater is collected on the roof, and then that water is diverted into uh, a series of plants, and the plants clean up the water, and then we use that in the sinks. And then the soapy water from the sinks are then run to the toilets, and then the, the poo water from the toilets is then run back to another series of plants, and the plants clean all that naturally, and then we circulate the water back. All the building could be built out of natural materials, that are all made locally and don't uh, give off harmful chemicals. And then we could put solar panels on the roof or a wind turbine and produce all the energy that we need in that building. We can do all that now. Uh, and would it cost more? Yeah, it would cost maybe 5% more. But if that's if you're only looking at the upfront cost of the building. In truth, the real impact of the building is not in the construction. The real impact of the building is in the operation of the building. Like your school was probably built a while ago and the real money that, that, that's spent is in the electricity and the energy and all that other stuff that goes into it. So if we're smart about how we design the building now, it'll pay for itself 10 times over in the life of the building. So we really can't afford not to build green buildings.